executive director of the town center CID. And uh, we just wanna welcome you all to our virtual public forum number two for the Bells Ferry Road LCI operational study. We are incredibly grateful for your participation and support. We could not do this work without you and certainly without our partners on this project. So I'm gonna turn it over to Aaron Thorinson with Gresham Smith Partners to uh, let everyone know who all's on the team and working with us and get started. Aaron, thank you. Great, thank you so much, Tracy. Welcome everyone and thank you for being here today. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today uh, during your lunch hour. Um, we are excited to share our uh, draft recommendations um, and um, share with you some of the findings from our uh, research that we've done over the last couple of months and some of the draft concepts and ideas that we have come up with. So just, we're just getting started here. I see that it's, it's um, we've got a few attendees coming online. I just wanted to take a few minutes to thank our partners and then we'll orient everyone to um, how we're gonna conduct this webinar this afternoon. Um, so first and foremost, as uh, Tracy mentioned, I do wanna just take a minute to acknowledge our partners um, who are um, supporting this project as we go forward. Um, Cobb County uh, and particularly the Department of Transportation, we have uh, Karen Matthews and Kelly Patrick here representing Cobb County today. Um, we also have the Atlanta Regional Commission um, represented by Jared Lombard. Um, and this uh, project is part of the Atlanta Regional Commission's LCI program. Um, my name is Erin Thorson. I am the project manager with Gresham Smith. Um, I'm joined here by several of my colleagues uh, from Croy Engineering, um, Zach Lammers from Gresham Smith, Caroline Evans from Blue Cypress Consulting, and our team is also being supported by Edwards Pittman uh, Consulting. So those are the partners that are involved in the project. We are going to um, just have a couple of interactive components to today's uh, session. So just a couple of things for those that have not done uh, Zoom webinars before, um, you will have uh, the opportunity to submit questions using the Q&A function, um, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. Um, so feel free at any point during the meeting today to submit questions and we'll make some time to uh, pause periodically to look at those questions and we'll do our best to answer them toward the end of today's meeting. I also do wanna let you know that today's webinar is being recorded and a link will be placed on the Town Center CID uh, later this week after the public forum. And last but not least, as I mentioned, we're gonna have a couple of interactive uh, questions um, today. And so if you are using a tablet or computer, or if you have access to your phone, um, please go ahead and open your browser window and go to menti.com. That is M-E-N-T-I.com. And input this code that's shown on the screen here. Hopefully you can see that. It's 37407096. And we'll use that platform to, um, to ask you all for input and feedback as we go forward through the presentation. So just to practice and get warmed up, um, we wanted to hear from you all about as this pandemic uh, is beginning to wind down a little bit and as things are reopening, what are you most excited to do? What are the things that you are looking forward to doing um, now that we're all able to spend a little bit more time together? So go ahead and enter menti.com in your browser window and use that code 37407096 to enter your responses. We'll wait just another minute, make sure we're getting some responses here. We have some answers starting to come in. People are excited to see family, uh, to travel, um, to go to restaurants. We have uh, just another minute or so. We'll go ahead and let people enter a few more responses. You can enter one word at a time, um, up to three responses per person.
someone's excited to smile, that's great. I know it's been hard to kind of read people's facial expressions over the last couple of months. Great. Well, that's really just uh, kind of getting things warmed up a little bit, um, see how, how people are able to access the, the mentee questions. There'll be some other questions more specific to the study as we move forward. <clears throat> For today's meeting, we're gonna start with a brief overview of the study that we are um, currently undertaking. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the purpose and objectives of the study. We'll also share some of the input that we've heard over the course of the last several months, um, including our first public forum, which we held back in March. Um, and then we'll share some community survey results, um, observations from our um, road safety audit, and then we'll share primarily our draft recommendations for the study corridor. So this Bells Ferry operational study is really focused on the segment of Bells Ferry Road between Chastain Road and New Chastain Road down to Barrett Parkway, Piedmont Road. The purpose is to identify the operational needs along the study corridor, really looking at ways to improve safety and operations um, for all types of travelers. The goal was to identify what the needs are so that if and when funding becomes available, there are potential projects in the pipeline. Um, it's also intended to help set the stage for the future bridge replacement of the bridge that's over Noonday Creek along uh, Bells Ferry Road. So that is a project that's part of Cobb County's 2022 SPLOST. And um, there will be an opportunity uh, with that bridge replacement to address some of the other operational needs um, along the study corridor, um, particularly in that area around the trailhead and the bridge. Our, the purpose of the study, um, in addition to identifying those needs, is the, then to develop a conceptual plan or some draft recommendations uh, to improve safety and operations and come up with a, a list of projects and a 100 day action plan. So really trying to come up with what can be done in the short term as well as the long term to help address some of these operational and safety needs. We kicked off the project uh, at the very end of 2020. Um, and began immediately uh, meeting with our project management team, which consists of those folks I mentioned earlier from uh, Cobb County, from Town Center CID, from the Atlanta Regional Commission, as well as our consultant team. Um, we have a stakeholder committee um, that we've also been meeting with, um, had a meeting just a couple weeks ago to review some of the draft recommendations. Um, we also conducted an analysis of existing conditions, environmental considerations, we did a road safety audit looking at safety needs along the study corridor and then began to develop our uh, draft recommendations and priorities for future improvements. So as you can see here, we're kind of in the final phases of the study. Um, we are here in mid-July and we are in the process of developing our draft and then final recommendations. And we'll be preparing a report over the next two months and submitting that to the CID. There's additional information about the study available on the Town Center CID's website, which we'll make sure to post that in the chat. So I mentioned earlier that we held a public forum in March, um, which many of you attended. Um, and we talked about our existing conditions findings, some of the safety data and our preliminary traffic analysis. We also asked questions of the participants about what types of improvements they would like to see to help make Bells Ferry Road safer and more efficient. And some of the responses that we uh, got point to the need for turn lanes, continuous sidewalks, um, wider sidewalks that allow for bicycle usage, um, uh, deceleration lanes, pedestrian access across the bridge. Um, and participants reported during that meeting that they really like and value the trail access, the new sidewalks along Bells Ferry Road, as well as the uh, residential nature of the study corridor and the tree cover that is present. We also conducted a community survey starting in March. It was open for about a month um, between mid-March following the first public forum and mid-April. Um, and we received uh, uh, several dozen responses, uh, 50 or 60 responses in total. Um, and we asked participants to rank the types of challenges that they experienced when traveling this portion of Bells Ferry Road. So on a scale of one to five, what were the least and most challenging experiences? And as you can see in the results here, the lack of continuous sidewalk and the traffic congestion at the signalized intersections, especially during peak periods, were the two top uh, challenges that people reported here. You can see 42 and 34% uh, ranked those as the most challenging issues along the study corridor. 
We also asked people how interested they are in biking, walking, and driving to various destinations along the study corridor, both now and in the future. And as you can see here, there's a great interest in driving to all destinations um, in the future, as well as uh, a moderate interest in being able to walk or bike to the Noonday Creek Trail. Following that, we asked folks about the types of potential improvements that they would like to see that would help enhance their experience traveling along Bells Ferry Road. Um, we provided several categories of different types of improvements. Um, traffic signal improvements and intersection improvements really rose to the top of that list. Those were the two top most ranked um, priorities. But we also did see some interest, as you can see here shown in green, in having additional crosswalks, filling in sidewalk gaps, and just generally improving biking and walking conditions along the study corridor. We also had an opportunity for people to express additional concerns or provide ideas about um, other things that they'd like to see happen along the corridor. So you can see here just a sampling of some of the ideas that were expressed as part of that community survey. Um, there was concern about uh, danger for bicyclists, the lack of sidewalk connectivity, um, lighting access, and turning movements, being able to get to Bells Ferry Road from some of the side streets and neighborhoods. In addition, people added um, ideas for improving lighting, adding signage, um, thinking about building a walking and biking trail, and adding uh, turn lanes. As part of the study, our team uh, conducted a road safety audit, really uh, walking and driving along the corridor um, to really get a firsthand look at what's happening along the corridor and what some of the safety issues are. As you can see in this photo shown on the right, the, some of the side streets, particularly in the northern part of the study corridor, lack the proper striping. There, there would normally be a stop bar here associated with the stop sign, kind of reminding drivers where to stop so they don't pull too far out. Um, there's also uh, debris um, and gravel that gathers in some of the um, intersections, the corners of the intersections. We also noticed a significant amount of queuing, um, particularly in the northbound direction, waiting for vehicles waiting at Chastain Road in the afternoon. So as the traffic volumes pick up in the afternoon as folks are leaving work, um, the traffic backs up at that intersection and even blocks some of the side streets in that area. Of course, we've already talked about the intermittent sidewalk, some of the faded and worn or missing signage. And of course, there are also steep slopes in some of the areas near the creek, um, which um, were other things that we wanted to take into consideration as we think about uh, future recommendations. Our team also conducted a user stress audit. So we actually um, walked the corridor um, with uh, several of our project management team members to try to get a reading on how stressful it is walking in those areas where there is or is not sidewalk and kind of what the, you know, pinpointing some of those locations where people experience more stress, they're, they're less comfortable. So this is an average reading of all of the folks that participated in that user stress audit. And you can see the taller the bars are, the higher the average stress level. So in this case where there's a big spike here, this is really where the sidewalk ends near Cottonwood Drive. So as the sidewalk ends and you're walking along the road, you can see that there's a spike in heart rate and the stress that folks are experiencing. Similarly, crossing the bridge over Noonday Creek, you can see there's kind of a moderate increase here. Um, the bridge really isn't meant for pedestrians to, to travel across right now, and it's not very safe and comfortable feeling. Um, similarly, here at, at Big Shanty Road, there was a, a slight increase in stress as we were waiting to cross the road. There was um, oncoming traffic waiting to make the turn onto Big Shanty, and there's a slight increase in stress as, as we, as pedestrians, were trying to gauge whether the vehicle was going to turn or allow us to cross over the road. So this just really helps reinforce some of the things that we'd already observed about the corridor. The fact that the lack of sidewalk is not comfortable, that oncoming vehicles um, with, with no separation between the sidewalk and the roadway, for example, makes it a little bit less comfortable, a little more stressful. And that some of these side streets um, that have limited sight distance also um, contribute to those stress levels. So kind of tying all of that together, these are some of the key concerns or sort of the common themes that we see through all of our um, existing conditions and various safety and stress audits. Again, reiterating that lack of sidewalk and bicycle facilities in some places where it's disconnected 
um, making it more difficult for people uh, to the south to get direct access to the trailhead, for example, um, or for folks that are on the east side of Bells Ferry Road to get to the trailhead. There's not a direct crossing um, between the two signalized intersections. The bridge itself over Noonday Creek is not safe and comfortable for people biking or walking right now. There's currently no provided sidewalk or, or bike facilities. And then we also do see uh, some challenges with turning movements at key intersections and congestion and queuing that happens at those locations, particularly during the peak commute times. So kind of in summary, there's an opportunity to really improve safety and comfort um, to improve access and connectivity, reduce the frequency of crashes along the study corridor, and reduce uh, queuing and improve traffic operations at those key intersections. So with that in mind, our team went about um, developing a series of draft recommendations. Um, I should reiterate that these are draft recommendations, and this this study is really just that. It's a study of what the needs are and some potential ways that those needs might be addressed in the future. Um, there are no decisions that have been made. This is not a, an approved plan or project yet. And there's no identified source of funding at this time. Part of what would happen in the future is that our team would develop some cost estimates and identify some potential funding sources. But really the goal here is just to come up with a list of potential projects so that if and when funding becomes available, there are some ideas uh, ready to go. Throughout the length of the corridor, um, we would like to recommend uh, kind of creating that continuous sidewalk and multi-use trail network. So really from one end to the other, making sure that folks are able to, to walk and in some sections be able to bike along that corridor, um, especially uh, to be able to get access to the Noonday Creek Trailhead. We'd also like to see uh, signage replaced throughout the corridor, upgraded um, and replaced as needed, depending on its current condition. Um, and we'd also recommend uh, some pedestrian scale lighting, particularly in the segments where the multi-use trail um, will be present along the west side of the study corridor. So moving into uh, some of the more location specific recommendations, um, we are recommending to, to um, provide a center two-way left turn lane um, in certain locations along the study corridor that would become a dedicated left turn lane at side streets. And where that um, center turn lane is not needed, there's an opportunity to install some short raised medians um, between the side streets that wouldn't block driveways or the side streets, but would help kind of uh, create that green feel, uh, it could be planted medians, and it would help slow traffic down through those areas. By providing that center left turn lane that becomes a a dedicated left turn lane at the side streets, like in this area here, um, what that would do is allow the turning traffic to move into that center lane to slow down and stop in order to make the appropriate left turn so that they can wait for oncoming traffic. So that will help reduce the frequency and likelihood of rear end crashes and make the corridor safer overall. Having the raised medians will also help slow vehicle speeds, making the corridor feel a little bit narrower um, and will help kind of contribute to an overall uh, more multimodal friendly uh, corridor. This is just, these are some of the other areas where we would be um, looking at providing some of those left turn lanes to the side streets. And in areas like this, where you see north of the trailhead here, that's a great place for as an opportunity to install a, a raised median here in this segment between the trailhead itself and the driveways. Similarly, south of the bridge, there's a section where there are no side streets or driveways. So that's another opportunity to create a, a short raised median. And then that center lane would become a left turn lane to provide access to side streets like Rockbridge Road and Cottonwood Drive, for example. So this is just an, an illustration of what that would potentially look like in the section, the northern part of the study corridor. So from Chastain Road uh, to Big Shanty Road, you'd have a sidewalk on both sides of the road. Um, you'd have 11 foot uh, travel lanes, one in each direction. And then where needed this left turn lane that would become a dedicated left turn or a two way center left turn lane, depending on, on its location. And I'll show an example of what that would look like with a median in the middle of it here shortly. In the southern portion of the corridor between Big Shanty Road and Barrett Parkway, um, we would uh, propose extending the sidewalk along the east side of the study corridor and expanding the existing sidewalk to a 10 foot wide 
multi-use trail that would allow bicycle and pedestrian access on the west side of the study corridor. So if, if you can imagine this is a view facing south, you'd have the turn lane in the middle, you'd have one travel lane in each direction, uh, a sidewalk on the east side of the corridor and the multi-use trail on the west side of the corridor. And here's what that would look like uh, with a potential raised median in the middle. So it'd be just sort of a, a short little uh, low maintenance um, median with uh, some vegetation. In terms of the multi-use trail and sidewalk recommendations, we've talked about that a little bit already. Um, as we know, there are some um, existing gaps in the sidewalk network. So this here is Big Shanty Road on the right side of the screen, and you've got Chastain, New Chastain Road on the left side of the screen. So where there's sidewalk currently missing, uh, we would propose installing sidewalk to create that seamless continuous network, um, installing the appropriate curb ramps that are needed at the side streets. And this will really help um, improve safety and comfort for people walking through the corridor, improve access and connectivity to those destinations um, like the trailhead, as well as um, the neighborhoods themselves. And it will help reduce the likelihood of any crashes that involve pedestrians or cyclists along the study corridor. And I will say too that these recommendations are designed to be, um, you know, we're, we're, we will be kind of creating a list of projects, individual project recommendations. So they won't be all done at, at the exact same time, but as it makes sense to do these in conjunction with one another, um, multiple things could happen at the same time. So for example, uh, a segment of the left turn lane could be installed at the same time that the sidewalk is installed so that you're minimizing the amount of uh, work that's needed to kind of um, develop all of these <clears throat> projects. In the um, segments to the south of Big Shanty Road, there is an existing um, eight foot wide sidewalk here. And we would recommend expanding that to a 10 foot wide multi-use trail in order to meet the minimum standards uh, for bicycle access. So the, the standard is a minimum of 10 feet wide in order to accommodate bicyclists and uh, pedestrians. So we'd widen that to be a 10 foot wide kind of holding the curb where it is on the west side of the road and then fill in the sidewalk, um, bringing it all the way down to and, uh, and past the uh, trailhead here on the east side of the study corridor. And then south of the trailhead here, we would continue that 10 foot wide multi-use path to the south, um, extending it um, and kind of making that continuous seamless connection all the way down to uh, probably the vicinity of the town center Prado there, the public shopping center on the south. On the east side of the road, that sidewalk would be installed to continue all the way down to meet with the existing sidewalk that um, uh, ends right at um, Rockbridge Road there. So um, just wanted to see kind of what folks are, are thinking about some of these recommendations so far. We'll get into some more location specific recommendations as we move forward. Um, but again, if you have your uh, web browser up and you um, have that menti code in there, 3740-7096, we, we are asking folks to kind of uh, give us an indication of how well these proposed recommendations approve um, access and connectivity, improve safety for travelers, improve traffic operations, or improve comfort for people biking and walking. So this is on a, on a sliding scale here. Um, if you go to menti.com and enter that code, then you'll have an opportunity to um, uh, kind of slide your um, scale bar up and down to tell us uh, which of these things you think are helping to improve each of these identified needs and opportunities. So you see we've got a response here that's showing that these are helping to address access and connectivity. A little bit less on the safety for all travelers. We'll wait just another minute or so to give people a chance to respond. We've got um, high ratings for the access and connectivity, um, slightly less for safety, 
fairly high ratings for improving traffic operations and fairly high ratings for improving comfort for people biking and walking. We'll go ahead and, and leave that open. I'm gonna move on, but if you haven't had a chance to, please go ahead and enter your responses there. We're, we are definitely interested in seeing how well you think these recommendations will support some of the goals and objectives of the study. So looking at some uh, location specific uh, recommendations, we are now here at the Chastain Road intersection. So this map is turned sideways, um, just so that um, uh, you all are aware this is uh, north to the left here. So this is um, Bells Ferry Road going kind of left and right across the map and then Chastain, New Chastain Road going across the center of the map. So what we're recommending here is actually consistent with what was recommended as part of the Chastain Road corridor study, which was completed last year. And it's an additional um, southbound right turn lane and an additional northbound right turn lane. So adding a short right turn lane in both directions for uh, people on Bells Ferry Road to be able to have extra room to make that turn onto Chastain or New Chastain Road. And this will really help alleviate some of the queuing that we talked about earlier on Bells Ferry Road. S sometimes the through traffic backs up so much that folks who want to make a right turn aren't able to get up to make that turn onto um, Chastain Road. And so this will free them up to be able to make that turn and it will help reduce delay, particularly in the afternoon during the peak period. Right turn lanes like this also will help reduce the crashes um, because it will reduce some of that queuing, queuing so there'll be less likely to have rear end collisions as people approach the intersection here. <clears throat> we also would recommend upgrading the, the um, mast arms and the traffic signals themselves at this location. Um, and I'm really looking at the optimizing of the signal timing in that location as well. At the Big Shanty Road um, intersection, we are um, looking at the possibility of a, of a single lane roundabout, um, which would tie into the Catherine Drive um, intersection as well. So it would tie those two roads together to create one uh, cohesive intersection. And really what a roundabout would do at this location is maintain the traffic flow through flowing through this intersection, but significantly slowing speeds through this area, helping to improve safety, reduce the traveling speeds. Right now, people that are traveling north and south on Bells Ferry Road uh, don't have to slow down at this intersection. And so they can just uh, speed right through the intersection, approaching the, the trailhead. And having a, a roundabout here will really force people to slow down a little bit and help kind of create that calmer, more residential feel in this area. Um, it will significantly reduce the amount of delay that travelers experience at this intersection waiting on Big Shanty Road, for example, to be able to turn onto and off of Bells Ferry Road. You can see here it would reduce that by about 30 seconds in the morning and about 230 seconds in the evening on that eastbound approach here from Big Shanty Road. This will also help reduce the likelihood and severity of crashes. The way that roundabouts are designed, they, they force folks to slow down um, to as they approach the intersection and then slowly travel through the roundabout. So even if crashes do occur, they're less likely to be as severe as they would if people are traveling at 40 or 45 miles an hour um, down Bells Ferry Road, for example. So there are some potential challenges to, to doing a project like this. Um, there are some significant utility poles um, that are uh, present at this intersection. Um, and those are things that you know, would need to be looked at in the next phases of design. This image that's shown here is really just a representation um, to kind of show um, the, the potential configuration, but it's, this is not fully designed yet. It's really just an illustration as kind of a, a, a representation of what that roundabout might look like. Um, as this is advanced into the next phases, it would get revised and kind of narrowed down a little bit to try to avoid as, as many property impacts as, as possible in this location. Continuing south along the corridor, um, looking at the um, uh, Bells Ferry Trailhead or the Noonday Creek Trailhead um, driveway access here and the bridge over Noonday Creek. As I had mentioned, there's a, a funding already allocated to replace that bridge over Noonday Creek, which is part of Cobb County's 2022 SPLOST. Um, and in conjunction with that, we wanted to sort of look at what might be needed um, to help set the stage for that project. So what we're recommending in this location is um, a widening of the bridge itself um, to accommodate 
uh, bicyclists and pedestrians on the bridge. So widening both sides to include a 10 foot wide multi-use path on the bridge, and then widening the bridge to provide that northbound left turn lane so that as people are coming on Bells Ferry Road, they'll have the opportunity to get into a left turn lane to be able to make that left into the trailhead here. We also um, looked at the possibility of um, whether a, uh, an extension of the Noonday Creek Trail could uh, be included beneath the bridge to provide a safe uh, crossing without um, putting people directly in the path of traffic. So it would be kind of a grade separated crossing here. If the Noonday Creek Trail is extended in the future, which is something that Cobb County is looking at studying in the next year or so. Um, and so our preliminary findings do indicate that we think that that could be feasible as part of that bridge widening project. So what this would do is help reduce the rear end collisions. Again, as people come around this curve and they wanna make a turn into the trailhead here, providing that left turn lane will give people the opportunity to pull over and slow down in order to make that turn um, safely and more comfortably. And I'll show an example of what that might look like on the bridge here. So the, um, the existing bridge is one lane in each direction with no real sidewalk on either side, just a, a little bit of a kind of raised shoulder there. Um, but we would widen that to be a multi-use trail on both sides of the road that provide people with a little bit more room, um, whether they're on bikes or on foot or pushing a stroller, um, making that crossing a little bit safer. And that would connect to the sidewalks and the multi-use trail on either side of of the road that we're recommending. And then in the center, you would have that northbound turn lane that would give you access to the trailhead there. At the Rockbridge Road intersection, so continuing down to the south of the trailhead, again, we're looking at providing that dedicated left turn lane. So Rockbridge Road's on the east side of the corridor. And this is the location where we saw the highest number of crashes along the study corridor outside of the two signalized intersections. So Big Shanty and Rockbridge Road were the two places where there were the highest number of collisions along the study corridor outside of Chastain Road and Barrett Parkway. And in large part, that's due to rear end crashes as people are waiting to make those uh, left turns onto the side streets. So by providing a dedicated left turn lane that allows people to move out of the way of the through traffic, that makes that um, turning movement safer and more comfortable. So again, this would be just providing that left turn lane for the access to Rockbridge Road, and then kind of uh, matching that back up to the existing uh, roadway there. And then at the southern end of the study corridor um, at Barrett Parkway and Piedmont Road, we did look at a number of different options here. Um, Cobb County recently completed an intersection improvement project here that provided the, the dual left turn lanes from Bells Ferry onto Piedmont Road and had also looked at a number of options um, on the south side of the intersection, um, which were not advanced because of the cost um, and impacts of utility relocation and the steep slopes. There's a guardrail and fence in that location as well. But we did want to take another look at the at the possibility of installing a southbound right turn lane. This is one of the most congested places along the study corridor, and we see significant delays and queuing, especially in the morning peak commute hours um, southbound on Bells Ferry Road. People back up in that, in that right turn and through lane on Bells Ferry to get to Barrett Parkway. So by adding a southbound right turn lane, that would really significantly reduce um, delays in the morning commute hours. Um, we do recognize that there is a, um, a McAfee house here that's at the, the corner of Barrett Parkway and Bells Ferry Road and would want to minimize any impacts to that potentially historic property there. Um, but we do think it would be feasible to get a, a right turn lane in at that location to kind of help alleviate some of that congestion and queuing in that location, which is one of the things that we heard um, from our community outreach earlier in the study, that that's a, a significant concern for folks. At some of these other more uh, minor side street intersections, we're really just looking at uh, a few uh, signage and pavement marking um, improvements. So you can see here one example where there's no stop bar there. Um, in part, that's because there's no sidewalk in this section right now, but as that sidewalk is installed, we would wanna make sure to provide that, that stop bar, make sure that drivers know to stop before they get to the sidewalk, before they go too far out into the study corridor. 
Um, we'd also install some signage to alert drivers to the intersections that are ahead of them so that they know to expect that people may be turning onto those side streets. Um, and then providing um, or clearing some vegetation to help improve sight distance in some of those locations. You can see here, this is another example where some of the, the trees and shrubs that are present in that location may block people's view as they're trying to turn from side streets onto Bells Ferry Road. <clears throat> um, we also wanted to, to look at the possibility of incorporating some additional vegetation, um, particularly in the area near the Bells Ferry Trailhead, um, where there's not currently any homes or, or driveways. Um, there's an opportunity here to really help kind of uh, revegetate that, that slope and provide some shade um, as the multi-use path um, it you know, is installed there and more people begin to walk to make that connection from Bells Ferry Road up to Big Shanty Road, there's an opportunity to provide some shade trees, maybe install some uh, street furniture and kind of cr help create a little bit more of a sense of place in this location. Um, we're also, um, the CID is working to coordinate both with Cobb County and the Edison Chastain development um, to um, provide some shared uh, use of the uh, parking for the new development here that would allow people who are using the trailhead during outside of business hours, like on a weekend, for example, to be able to park in that parking lot and then make their way over to the trailhead. So that's something that's already kind of um, uh, being examined on, on the side, but that presents a really great opportunity to kind of help create this trailhead as a real anchor for the study corridor and, and create that as a destination. Um, we also are looking at the possibility of some additional educational signage highlighting the ecological benefits of the Noonday Creek and some of the ecological services that that provides and kind of how it contributes to the overall environmental quality of the area. Um, we also are, are looking at um, uh, coordinating with Cobb County to consider uh, a pilot study um, to look at some dynamic speed display devices uh, in this area near the bridge or trailhead. So typically those are installed on, on other types of roads, but the county um, is interested in maybe considering a pilot project to look at the use of those um, electronic signs that basically tell you how fast you're going to help kind of reinforce to drivers um, that they should you know, slow down or kind of remind them of what the speed limit is through this area. So here's kind of a before example. This is um, a street view from Google from a couple years ago before the um, wide sidewalk was installed here while this building was under construction. And here's just a, a rendering of uh, what that might look like in the future when you kind of bring all of these elements together. So some additional uh, vegetation, trees and shrubs along the slope here to um, kind of help create that sense of place. Again, provide shade for people who may be walking or biking in that area. Um, we would have the, the wider multi-use path here, which may present an opportunity to incorporate some street furniture or even potentially some new signage or public art. Um, and then having those uh, short raised medians in this area, again, where there's no driveways, um, will help kind of contribute to that overall green feel of the corridor, as well as to help slow uh, cars through this area um, by making the lanes feel a little bit narrower than they are. And then lastly, adding the sidewalk on the um, east side of the corridor here so that you'll be able to walk along both sides of the road. So with that, we wanted to kind of pause here and see what you all are thinking um, about these ideas and, and potential recommendations. Of the ideas that were presented here today, what do you think will do the most to improve safety and operations along this part of Bells Ferry Road? Is it the multi-use trail? Is it the left turn lanes and the short raised medians? Is it the right turn lane at Chastain Road? Uh, the bridge replacement and widening? The, the roundabout at Big Shanty Road? So you can pick as many of these as, as you like. Um, I believe you're able to enter um, select multiple options here. So we'd kind of just like to get your take on which of these things you think will help improve safety and operations the most. We've got some initial votes for the sidewalk and multi-use trail, the left turn lanes and short raised medians. And again, for folks that uh, maybe haven't been on since the beginning, if you go to menti.com, and use the code 
4070096. We'd love it if you could go ahead and enter your responses here. I see we're getting some votes for the turn lanes, the bridge replacement and widening, a couple of votes for the roundabout, more support for the multi use trail. some support for the right turn lane at Barrett Parkway as well. We'll give just another minute for folks to be able to um, provide their responses. Let's see if we get one or two more in. That's probably about a third of the attendees out there. So if you haven't um, uh, filled out the, the poll yet, please do that. And moving on, we'd also like to hear what other ideas um, you might have, or if there's other suggestions that you think that we ought to be considering, um, what else we might wanna look at. We are, as I said, kind of in the draft recommendations phase. We wanted to present these to you today to kind of get your initial reactions and get your thoughts. Um, and then we'll be, um, grouping these recommendations, kind of refining them a little bit, and then creating a, a potential project list, um, coming up with, with our estimates for how much we think they might cost, and then uh, preparing our final report. So if there's other ideas that you haven't heard um, yet, or things that you think that we ought to be um, considering, go ahead and just enter your, your ideas here. This is an open-ended question. Um, you can write in short phrases or suggestions. So we have a suggestion for, for a town hall meeting uh, to discuss with the community. So again, this is just a study. So there's nothing um, that is uh, you know, imminently uh, gonna happen directly as a result of this, but it was kind of just to assess what the needs are and then come up with some possibilities for um, ways that we might address some of those needs. Any other ideas or suggestions? Caroline, do we have any um, questions that have been submitted? No, Erin, everyone's been very quiet. <laughs> no <Okay>. questions. <laughs> um, I see one coming in now. Um, okay. So this is from someone who joined late, but um, is asking about any plans for north of New Chapter. Okay, great. That's a good question. Um, the The limits of our study are actually from Chastain Road to Barrett Parkway, Piedmont Road. So this study is not considering anything uh, north of Chastain Road um, at this point in time. And Erin, I can jump in there too. Uh, yes, that please. is actually, that's outside of the boundary of the CID. And legally, um, per our state legislation, we can only do projects that are within our CID boundary. Great, thank you, Tracy. I see also a couple of other ideas um, submitted through Menti. Um, under, under bridge sidewalk should be completed at the same time as bridge widening. So yes, absolutely. That's part of why we wanted to at least take an initial look at that was to see if we thought it was even feasible so that that can be done all at one time. So ultimately that, it's the, that will be the county's project and they will be um, coming up with the, the you know, design and hiring the, the team to do the design and, and develop that project. But we did wanna just look to see if we thought that that was uh, feasible. So it's something that you know, they can take into consideration as they do that project. I don't know if uh, Kelly or Karen, you wanna weigh in and add anything to that at this time? I don't have anything to add. Okay, thanks Kelly. Um, I see also in, in the chat, um, there's a, a question or a comment that is um, expressing some concern about the speed of travel and turning to the neighborhoods um, where there are some near miss accidents while, while people are waiting to enter the neighborhoods. So I think um, in part, the, the left turn lanes um, will help with that. Um, it, you know, there are 
uh, near misses that may happen with people turning left into those neighborhoods um, as well. And by providing that center left turn lane or that dedicated left turn lane to the side streets and neighborhoods, that will give folks an opportunity to, to move out of the way of, of through traffic and hopefully avoid uh, a good number of those um, rear end collisions or near misses. Um, in terms of the speed, I see here too, someone uh, uh, mentions on the Menti uh, concern about speeding on, on Bells Ferry Road. Um, and one of the things that we're looking at, as I mentioned, is, is those um, short raised medians, which will help um, those design types of elements really help uh, lower speeds even more so than speed limits. We all uh, know that frequently, even though there's a posted speed limit, it's, it's often not obeyed. And so having some of those um, design elements that really help people slow down uh, the, the roundabout, for example, at Big Shanty could be a, a big help in that regard by forcing people to slow down as they navigate through that roundabout in order to get through that area. Um, so there's some design things that we're looking at, but certainly um, there, the suggestion to consider lowering the speed is something that we can also um, um, look at as well. And with the added sidewalks I see here, could there be a need for a mid-block crossing to support pedestrians? So it's it's really preferred to kind of keep the crosswalks at the signalized intersections or the, the um, the intersections where there is a, a dedicated crosswalk. So one of the advantages of providing a roundabout at Big Shanty Road, for example, would be to provide pedestrian crossings at that location so that you don't have to go quite so far to get from one side of the road to the other. And then that was also the hope for providing a, a connection for the trail underneath the bridge at uh, Noonday Creek. But certainly there could be um, uh, another look or you know, we could give some additional consideration for a mid-block crossing. Um, there are some requirements um, that we would want to make sure that we're looking at um, in terms of the design of that and the, the speed limit, um, which is a factor in what type of mid-block crossing you use. And Erin, there's a couple more that have come in through the chat. Okay. Um, you address the one about the speed of travel, the turn to the neighborhoods. And then there's just a clarifying question about, um, will this be north of Chastain for the left turn lanes? Um, again, the, the study, uh, you know, our study boundaries are Chastain Road to uh, Barrett Parkway, Piedmont Road. So we're not looking at anything as Tracy had mentioned outside of that study area. So we're not really looking at anything north of Chastain. And then there's someone else in the chat who um, is representing the Bells Ferry Elementary PTA. So thanks for being here. Um, and uh, they wanted to note that during school, you can only turn right out of the school, but there's not a good place to turn around. Um, and so wondered if you had anything to address that. Mm -hmm. So that's something we talked about um, uh, quite a bit uh, during our project management team meetings and as we were looking at, at potential options um, and the, the county and the school have worked closely together to, to try to address that and it's definitely something that we have heard. Um, I think one option there is um, if the roundabout at Big Shanty Road um, would be um, advanced or moved forward, that is a, a good opportunity to be able to make that turnaround without having to use some of the side streets. So it'd be easy to, to travel up to Big Shanty, circulate through that roundabout, and then come back down southbound on Bells Ferry Road, for example. Um, so that, that's, one, that's one option um, to help address that. Great, and we have one more question about um, if there will be a guardrail put in place on Bell's Ferry to the new Chastain right turn lane. So we haven't done the, the design for that yet. This is just a study to look at the, the um, potential recommendations. Um, that's something that would need to be examined in a little bit more detail to um, determine if a guardrail is warranted. I believe it's something that the county has looked at in the past. Um, we know that there are some, some slopes in that area um, and um, there's some, uh, you know, criteria that would need to be examined to see if it would warrant that. Um, but right now we're not um, getting into that level of detail as part of this study. Kelly, anything you wanna add to that or clarify? 
That's correct. Yeah, um, it, we would look at it in the design phase and determine um, if the addition of a right turn lane would then uh, meet criteria for guardrail, but it doesn't meet at this time. Great, thank you. And Erin, I don't see any other questions coming in. Okay, great. Thank you, Caroline. Sure. We have just a few minutes left, so I just wanted to kind of um, let everyone know where we're headed from here um, based on the feedback and the um, recommend the input that we get from you all today, that um, the feedback that you've provided um, through this uh, Mentimeter questions, through your chat questions, and then also, if you want to um, email us or visit the project page on the study website, um, we can, we, you know, we'll definitely take into consideration your, your thoughts and comments. Um, our project management team will meet one more time um, at the end of the month to review the feedback and refine the recommendations um, before we start to put together our list of projects. Um, and then we'll be preparing our draft report and meeting with our stakeholder committee one more time as well. Um, and then we'll be uh, preparing the report and finalizing that um, through August and into September. There is some additional information um, on the Town Center CID website. There's a specific page for the, um, the Bells Ferry Road study, um, which I think, Caroline, did you post that in the chat already? I did, yes, okay, at the great. top of the chat. Great. And on that page, there is a comment form. So folks are able to go ahead and fill out the comment form and send in your suggestions that way. We'll also be providing a, a link to the recording of this presentation. Um, and when the meeting ends, you'll get a prompt for a couple of final questions just to kind of get your thoughts and your takeaways um, after hearing the draft recommendations. So please do take a few minutes to fill that out. And those um, uh, answers will come directly to me as the project manager, as well as to um, Alicia, who is the project manager for the Town Center CID. Our contact information is here on the, on the um, slide as well, so feel free to um, send us an email with any thoughts or suggestions or comments that you have. Um, and again, we'll post a link to the uh, recording of this presentation after the meeting. Any other questions or comments from anyone before we sign off? Tracy, anything you wanna close with? Just wanna say thank you again. That's okay, it. great. Well, thanks everyone for taking the time to spend your lunch hour with us. We really appreciate your thoughtful feedback. Um, we'll post this recording and look forward to getting any additional thoughts or comments from you. If you do have anything that you'd like to email us with, um, please do that in the next week or so, um, so that we can keep moving forward with uh, refining our recommendations. Thanks everyone.